I think it's sometimes easiest, easy for us to, to focus on circumstance, to focus on the things that are going on around us. And I think we're all very capable of that. And tonight I just want to speak to us, and it's not going to be in any certain format per se, but I believe this. God has a plan for us even when. And as you think about the even whens, uh, you know, we can recognize if we're not careful, we listen to the news and get focused on it, we would deem our world is falling apart. The first thing I want to remind us of, the world, the kingdom we belong to is, is very much intact and it's still perfect. Uh, because as believers, we're part of God's kingdom. But as we think about that and, you know, God is, has a plan for us even when, even in civil unrest, God has a plan for us, and we see that almost daily on the news. And the disasters that we see happening, the, the tornadoes, the floods, even today the earthquake in, in Afghanistan and the lives that are lost through those things, the war that we know is going on, and, and those that we sometimes don't hear about. Um, it's easy enough to look at the price of gasoline and recognize, you know, uh, economics are, are changing. I do want to say this in that piece of it. I realize it's high, but I'm so thankful I got here tonight. And again, as long as the way I see it, if we have money to put it in our tanks, we're rich beyond. And I think about health issues, uh, and we've all experienced, you know, whether they're minor or major health issues, but God still has a plan even when. And then to address the, the morality that... Uh, we see in our nation is that's rapidly changing. As we go forward in this, I, I want to encourage us tonight, as long as we stay in, in relationship with God as, as we're called to do, and some of you have heard me say this, and not ever will I equate the gospel to shoes. I, d I don't want it to be that. But it's just a thought I consistently remind myself of. When we recognize all of these things that are tied to human nature and human behavior, and we think about the difference in a biblical and a, and a secular worldview, as we think about the worldview that a lost person has, I would equate it to this. We have this wonderful gospel given to us, and we're able to proclaim him in this world we live in. So, personally, I choose to be excited about that because... To go back to the shoe statement, if I was a shoe salesman, I would want to go to places people didn't have shoes. So we have the gospel, and the very best place for that to be presented is to the lost, because it's something they yet to have. So therefore, I want us to be encouraged in what we're going to talk about tonight. And again, we'll move through these scriptures rather quickly. It's going to be a lot of scripture, because I want to speak more topical to it, and and. I begin out, uh, I read a lot, I get articles from Open Doors, I, I've currently been reading a book, uh, Evangelism in Exile, and to think about that, and, and it's tied to this country that we now live in, and as we think about that and think about the persecuted church, recognizing it may soon be here in this nation, and some of it has kind of already started, but I want us to look at some scriptures, and we'll begin out in, a, in Ecclesiastes, or forgive me, forgive me. We're going to start out in Acts. And I'm going to read the story of, of Peter and John as they were in this fledgling beginning to share in the world, knowing that the, Jesus had just recently ascended. And in this, just even the persecution that comes here, but how they reacted to that persecution. And it begins out in chapter 4. We're going to be in verses 7 is where we'll start. But as this chapter begins, uh, they, were, they were in front of people and in front of the priests and speaking to them. So as we start out here in verse 7, it says, And when they had set them in the midst, and this is speaking of the leaders there, and that they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means has he been made well? Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here whole. 
This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. This next verse, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained, and they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And I want to remind us how important it is to be with Jesus daily, sometimes hourly, maybe even moment by moment, that we seek him in all we do. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spread no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to, this man, they speak to no man in this name. So they called him and they commanded them not to speak, at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot speak, we cannot but speak the things of which we have seen and heard. And so when they further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way punishing them because of the people since they all glorified God for what had been done. Recognizing they were seeking to harm them, telling them, you cannot speak this name. I want us to be encouraged. We can very actively speak that name because, again, do we, do we speak more to men or more about God? And my, my answer is we are to follow God's will. So let's look on, in Ecclesiastes 1.9. Ecclesiastes 1.9. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. These times that we face, they've been before others, and others have had to deal with some of the, the very circumstances, the very um, things that seem to come at us. So we can recognize there is nothing. Let's flip to Romans 8.28. And a lot of these are verses. They're just reminders for us tonight to recognize that God is for us. It says, Romans 8, verse 28, And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Fully recognizing in all circumstances God is for us. And through and in those circumstances, he is actively working that for our good. And we can be encouraged by that. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No, no, no temptation has overtaken you such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I'm convinced this verse tells us when temptation comes, we are to turn to him and turn away from our, our own desires as well as the temptation itself. So I've got seven things I want us to talk about tonight, and, and those things are listed, if you happen to pick up the notes, they're listed on, on the notes portion of it. So as we think about how to be in right relation with him and to be where we need to be, to be abiding with him, I think of the verse in James, count all, joy, count all tribulation with joy. That's a struggle for me at times. But I also recognize this fully as I give thanks. If we're focused on being thankful, it helps us not to see what we would deem to be bad things or things going on around us. I want us to look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And again, these are familiar verses for a lot of people. Chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
You know, I've heard people mention at times they're not sure what God's will is for them. I'm very confident this is, this is a piece of that will for your life, for Him. And that is in everything that we give thanks. You know, we can recognize quickly the, the blessings we have, um, but if we dig deeper and below that level and think about what it is to give thanks, this is what I know. I am no longer bound for an eternity in hell. And not because of what I've done, but because of what I've accepted that Jesus Christ has done. So no matter any circumstances that could come at me in this life, if I will but remember that, I can remember, he says, this life is but a vapor, and then it's going to pass. And if I stand upon that fact and upon the fact that because of what he's done and what I've accepted, that we can spend eternity in heaven with him. He supplies all of our needs. I've never had to lack my needs. And I know there are those that struggle with that at times. But he says he, he, was, he cares more for us than the sparrow. And he will see after our needs. And then I think about this often. And I want to challenge you to consider it if you haven't ever. But I consider why I had the privilege to be born in the United States of America. And I still believe, based on what I know of the rest of the world, this is still absolutely the best place to reside on the face of this planet. But as I consider that, could I have been that Afghan that right now is trapped in a country with laws that I, I, I couldn't currently agree with? And there are Christians in Afghanistan. To think through all of these things and to recognize we have so much to be thankful for. And if we will but fo focus on those things, circumstances become much less important to us. All right, next, I want us to look at fear, and we need to refuse to allow fear to win. And we're going to look in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Forgive me, it's chapter 12, verse 9. My bifocals aren't working well. Chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said to me, and we understand this is, this is Jesus speaking to Paul as he had prayed about the thorn. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In my own life, one of the things that, that confronts me the most, and this is me, I'm sure each of you have different things, but I struggle when my family is sick, uh, when my wife or my children are ill. I would much rather be in that place. And it becomes that place that, that we feel so helpless. Uh, we feel like it's beyond who we are. And to recognize this verse says it's in those times his grace is very and all sufficient for us. And, and if we, we recognize that and boast in those circumstances, then again, we're moving in the direction that he would have us to go. I want us to look at the scripture uh, in John chapter 14 as we talk about this next point, to rely upon God. John 14, verse 7, rely upon God. 1427. Peace I, live, I leave with you. My peace I will give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, in our own lives, um, and this came to me when I was preparing for this in that verse, uh, let it be well with us and let us not be afraid. We were driving, and um, I'm just going to share a quick clip and then move on, but we were driving to Little Rock uh, when our child was sick, and they had flown him to Children's at, at Little Rock, and of course we weren't allowed to fly on the helicopter and go with them, so we had to drive, knowing that he would be there before we could get there. And it was amazing to me 
as we went, and this was about daylight because the sun had just begun to come up in the eastern sky as we were headed east. And I remember where we were, and I was flooded with this thought, it is well with my soul. And we began to sing that song as we traveled, not knowing the outcome, but to recognize no circumstances take away it being well with our soul. And if we'll just but realize that and stand upon that fact, again, we can push through any circumstances. Um, I want us also to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. This verse tells us, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them, and rose again. Again, he has a plan for us. No matter what's going on around us, he has a plan. And that's that, that is that we live for him. I want us to look at the next statement, uh, take a courageous next step. These verses are going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verses 13 and 14. Watch Stand fast in faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Even last night, I, I had a conversation with our youngest, with Maddox, and we were talking about some circumstances, uh, recognizing he's still continuing to grow in his life, and there are things that, that we all fear, and sometimes just being in a group of people where you know any, don't know anybody is that place that we might fear. But we, we talked about this word courage and, and, and what that really means and to stand fast in faith, be brave, be strong. As far as I can tell, bravery is not required unless you're confronted with something that you fear. Um, there's, no, there's no value in bravery unless we're confronted with circumstances that we can deem outside of our control or, or not easily overcome. And we're, we're going to talk more about courage here in a minute and what that looks like. But it's out of our faith that, that we're able to show love to the world that's around us because this world does not always treat us kindly, those in it. And there's harsh things said, there's harsh things done. A lot of times things are falsely implied. But we can recognize through, this, through faith to be, be brave and be strong it equips us to love them. It equips us to love them in such a way that, that Christ can be on display. And we, we talk about that, and it was shared with us, and I'm so thankful that we had the opportunity to go and be sent from here as we went, even in 2020, which was COVID, and we all recognize that. But we were told by many there that they were so thankful that we were able and decided to come because that year we were the only ones that did. And it required faith and knowing that we would be protected. And, and out of that, God planted a church. God planted a church out of that work and just the willingness to go and be a part of that. So we just need to recognize we, we have to be brave and we have to take that next step because fear immobilizes us. And the opposite of that is to be courageous and go forth in that. The next thing I want us to look at is we need to grieve what we've lost. Grieve what we've lost. And that's going to be found in Matthew eleven twenty eight. The comfort to walk through it is going to be found there. Matthew 11, verses 28 through, through 30. And again, these are familiar verses. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will give you rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think about this verse and, and what that means, and I understand the yoke, and that means hook to something, pulling it, and, and to recognize that if we're, if we're tired, if we're exhausted, if we're being attacked, that, that we don't always go forward as we should. But he says his yoke is easy. It's when we find rest in him. And that rest sometimes comes, and it, it's easy enough to recognize when we watch the news. When you watch the news and, you know, we, the shootings, the recent 
in the schools, things like that, it causes us to deeply grieve because we recognize how that impacts those families. How it, and I think if we're not careful, uh, I, I work in safety and, and we look at numbers and things like that and, and it talks about how many died doing this or how many. If we're not careful, we, we, we get to a point we merely see that as, as just a number on a screen not recognizing that's a child, that's a brother, that's a sister, a, a son, a mother, a father, whatever it might be. And we, we do. God created and, and allows us to grieve in those things. But we need to recognize it's upon him we go. And when we cast our cares upon him, then he lightens that load and makes it possible to keep going forward. We're not called to stop. No matter what happens around us, we're called to keep pushing forward in his will and his way for our lives. Um, I want us to look at forgive your enemies. These verses are found in Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 48, 43 through 48. <clears throat> but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do? Therefore you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. We can recognize in that statement, I, I believe in this moment he was speaking of the fact of even being sent down to this earth to walk among men. He left that perfect place in heaven and came down. The Bible's clear that we were his enemies uh, before we came to know him. And in that, he came down with such love and, and sacrificed himself for us and he calls us to do the same. And as he calls us to do that, he equips us to do that. It's when we rest in him that we have that ability. I know we all have stories, we all have events in our life where, where there were those that have tried to harm us. And, you know, we even hear, I hear this often, and, and I want to say this up front, I'm, I'm not for illegal immigration, okay, when I say what I'm going to say. But I, I think about the great influx of immigrants even now and have always been into this country. And I'm speaking of the, the ones that came here legally and continue to do so. But they are coming from all over the world. And when we think of what a refugee immigrant is, recognizing this person may come from a place that we've currently been in conflict with or whatever it may be, and we want to carry that forward, we have to guard severely against that. We are, we are commanded to forgive our enemies. And if we readily do that, I've heard, I've heard not forgiving somebody is like drinking poison and expecting them to get sick. It doesn't work that way. Forgiveness frees even us and it allows us again to love as we should love. The, the last thing I want us to talk about, keep persevering. We're going to find some scriptures in, in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. In verses 1 and 2, I want us to look, and it says, Therefore, since we are also surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Nobody else in this room may be, but I have always had a trait, stubbornness. And it still comes out at times. The flip side of that is I want to say this. That's not necessarily a bad trait, if we're stubborn and persevering in the way God has called us to go. To be stubborn in the face of the world. To be stubborn in, in our daily walk. To be consistent in that as we go forward. Hebrews 12, 3 and 4. 
For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. To me, this brings us right back to where we started. Um, First of all, he shed his blood. And for those of us who have accepted it, we can always give thanks for our salvation. And to recognize that he endured, he endured the pain and the suffering, and ultimately the death that our just God requires for sin. And that has not changed, nor will it. I want to challenge us tonight. May we be encouraged as we give thanks and recognize that we are called even when. Joshua 1, 1, 9, and this is going to be our last scripture, Joshua 1, 9. We're going to talk again about what it is. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We can hold fast to that promise. He is our Father. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And if we will consistently abide in Him, seek to be in correct relationship with Him, give thanks. If we will give thanks, refuse to let fear win, rely on God, take a courageous next step, Grieve what you have lost. Forgive your enemies. Keep persevering with the full recognition. Jesus desires our proclamation of him. He never needs us, our protection. Jesus does not need our protection. He is perfectly equipped to defend himself. He desires our proclamation. And may that be done in love. And because we have overcome, we overcome, we are equipped to proclaim him to a lost and dying world. I believe that is the very change agent needed to stop the majority of the the chaos we see in our world is a thriving relationship with Jesus Christ. God is worthy to be proclaimed by all the world. With that, I'm going to close. Father, again, we thank you, we praise you. We praise you knowing that you're with us always. God, you're not surprised by anything that happens in this world. And God, if we'll give thanks, we can always have the right attitude to carry out your will for our lives. God, I pray that you just help each one here, myself included, to be courageous. God, to go forth when it looks fearful, God, to, to boldly proclaim you, recognizing that you came, not only for us, but for the whole world. And God, may we count that as the privilege it is and go forth boldly from this place, proclaiming you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.